Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to something a little bit different to your average transit, van, connect, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, your run-of-the-mill rental traffic and things like that. LDV Maxis. Not a very well-known vehicle, but I just thought I would document it for that exact reason. A lot of critics out there who don't like them. I personally think they're an alright van. Yeah, I know there's some damage and stuff. We'll go through that on the review. But, they're, you know, they're about the size of a standard transit, short wheelbase, low roof. I'll go through the specs of it while I'm here at the back, obviously, as some of you will notice. 2.895, you'll be thinking, well, 2.8 engine? No, it's not. It's a 2.5 diesel, and the 95 stands for the brake horsepower. So, basically, it's 2.5 diesel, 95 brake horsepower, and the 2.8 stands for the weight. Uh, they do a few different ones. They do a 2.8, which is generally this one, the short wheelbase. They do a 3.2 ton, which is your medium wheelbase, and they do a 3.5 ton, which is your long wheelbase. And they all obviously come with high and low roofs and things like that. Uh, as you do with the transits but what they do say these are, are class leading for the size of the openings of the doors which you can see i'm not going to open this back door because there's stuff in it and the side door you can see they go right up right to the roof line and right to the floor where well, you notice with some of these new transits and stuff um the the lights cut in and they're styled and things like that so the, the, the do say, from what I've read up on them, they've got the best loading area on the doors, the side door and the back doors, and I would assume this goes for the, uh, the, the high tops and the long wheelbase ones as well. So there's a big plus point. Obviously, they are uh, a lot cheaper than anything else you can buy out there. Clearly, there's some signs of that on them. But there's one thing I want you to just have a look around this van, apart from the bit of damage, in is can you tell the big difference between this van and say a transit on a 57 plate have a look around what can you see absolutely none of anyone guessed rust look down here that's been paint that's come off from people getting in and out it's barely anything on a transit this would be absolutely hauled through and needed welding by now it's got, let's have a look, look in the wheel arches, you know, you're on a transit, this would be all filler, this is the original edge, in there, the chassis, zero, absolutely, look, shotgun mountain points, everything, down there where all the rubbish collects, these things, nothing, absolutely no rust anywhere. Bottoms of the doors will be rotten out on the transits. And here, look at this, where there's been some damage. Somebody's attempted painting it or something. But, you know, there's little chips. And, you know, these will have been done ages ago. On a transit, that will be hauled through. That would be a huge scab. Nothing. So whatever metal they make, let, let, let's have a look at this edge here, where it's been caught. See? That's bare metal there. And it's barely got surface corrosion on it. So, rot-wise tick build quality wise we'll do that on the inside i mean there are obviously the the panels are a bit you know at the end of the day if you're gonna go hammering the thing around then it, it does the job perfectly well and i don't i don't know if it's just me but i think they look okay <laughs> there's absolutely nothing i would not take a second look at one of these and criticize it for the way it looks from the front it looks, you know, bear in mind we're dealing with a 2007 vehicle here. It looks very modern, I think, for its age. And around the back, I don't know if there's some copyright reasons, but it does not look like a transit from the back. Um, you know, but that's just the way it was. So anyways, a little bit of history about these. They were built in connection with DU. You know, DU, like you get your DU Matiz and stuff like that, which I'll show you inside. Um, they were owned by DU and built in Birmingham up to 2011 and then from 2011 the changed keepers and stuff i think the they the were, the were made in china built somewhere else i think turkey and russia and god knows where else but up until 2011 they were uk built in birmingham so I, I think that's a nice thing to buy at least you're getting a british vehicle people can criticize them all they want but by god if you compare the reliability of a transit any of the Reynolds stuff, like, yeah, what is it, yeah, Nissan, 
the, the Cube Star, something they do, which is based on the Renault traffic, the Vauxhall Vivaro. There's certainly nothing to have a song and dance about. And before anybody mentions Volkswagen, absolute uh, garbage, in my opinion, for the money you pay for them, considering you probably buy about three Volkswagens for the price of one of these. Um, you know, they're, they're definitely nothing I would rave about. So... We'll have a look down. Obviously, I've mentioned they do all the different long wheelbase, high tops, low roofs, short wheelbase, medium wheelbase, long wheelbase. Obviously, this is just your standard low roof, short wheelbase, which is perfect, really. It's not really a great deal longer than something like a Volvo Estate. You can fit it on your drive, probably get it into most supermarkets. And I think of a 2.8 ton... Uh, 2.8 ton payload I think that's quite good to say this is the minimum of the lot tow bar on there nice bit of crash protection for the back and uh, you know I'm just going to go around and uh, do a general kind of right uh, like description of it I'm not huge I can't give you every spec about them but what they do is, is they use a 2.5 Fiat engine they can't, it's written on the top they're a VM motor which is owned by Fiat so you're getting a 2.5 16 valve 95 brake horsepower fiat engine um from i don't know a lot about them so i'm not going to comment we'll have a look under the bonnet and we'll we'll kind of have a I'll, I'll go through basically so there's under the bonnet supposedly this van only has 50,000 mile on the clock but it's supposed to have had a replacement engine it shouldn't have needed a replacement engine of 50,000 mile but i believe it's something to do with the speedo goes wrong on them so it could may well have 150,000 mile on but that's your engine there I'll just move this hose see on there it's your VM motor that's what they call it as VM motor and then it's got a 16 valve written which obviously you can see yeah 16 valve common rail diesel engine what did I say it was 95 brake horsepower I think they might do a higher output for the larger vans I don't know don't quote us on that but workability wise air filter nice and easy fuel filter nice and easy primer easy oil and filter can't be that difficult battery access fine as it happens this van's in for a new alternator the alternator's down there doesn't look too bad you know so from what i'm seeing no major rot no dpf as you can see always check when you're buying something of these ages you see on the chassis plate there 1.54 that means it's just got a cat on so you've got no dpf to worry about blocking up and it's all very simple all the agr system down there with vacuum valves it's all very kind of stone age technology which is what you want for a van because it's less to go wrong no hard blue no 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 rubbish like that just nice and simple common rail turbo diesel look after it and i would imagine it'll look after you can't comment on why it needed a new engine we don't know but let's face it when people don't service things when they hammer them when they don't look after them things go wrong even on the best of vehicles out there so that's under the bonnet uh we'll go around now and have a look in the back before we go into the back you might notice this van's got a window put in the side that's why i'm reviewing this van it's a little bit uh, a little bit of a different one for her we'll go in the back and i'll show you you won't be expecting this from an average looking white van and there we go I'm not going to try and get it too dirty in the back there when we feet and everything, but it's got a nice little... Somebody's just done a DIY job. It's just the last that comes into the garage. Just by no means at all a professional at this. She's just done it herself over COVID. Something to do. They bought herself a van and made it into a little day van. And I must admit, I think they've done a good job. A really good job. As you can see, it's got they've got that little, like, like a porter toilet there. They've got a mattress in there, which I think might... So you've got all the storage underneath... I imagine obviously that you can sit on that. They've done all the, the back out. I'm not sure what that is up there. I think it's some kind of little skylight. Let's have a look up on the roof. Let's jump up. Oh yeah, they have. They put that little little pod thing at the top, which acts as like a little window. So when you've got all the doors shut, you've got light coming through. I've done a lot. I'm not going to touch them back doors or open them in case there's stuff in the back that falls out. But they've done a lovely job. They've got all the lights up in, in here. They've done a, like the lining on the roof. I'm not sure if they've put the window in or the window was already on. But that's a cracking job to have there. Little table. Storage. Little seat with some more storage. The floor's been done. Check a plate on the end. Whoever's done that. Good job. Save her getting all, you know, hammered to bits. You obviously got, they've got the curtain just to put across the carb at the front. 
for obviously when you if you're having a sleep or you want some privacy in that. Uh, I think they've done a really nice. Really nice job in here, to be fair. And I have, I did spy before, if you look down there, and just see a bit of silver. And I'll, I'll come in, I'll, I'll stand and I'll, I'll wipe the marks off off my feet. When I looked at this door earlier, when I opened the, the lock on it, they've done all the full insulation here, you can see. So everywhere that, you know, like it will keep the hidden, you know, they've obviously put it up into the roof. They've put it behind all these, they've put it behind them, you can see it in the top corners. So it's all been fully insulated. Um, so, cracking job. Another thing as well, the door actually opens and doesn't fall off. M most Mercedes Sprinters and, uh, you know, it works, it doesn't fall off and most vans are always falling off. We'll have a quick look in the passenger side here, there's not much to see, obviously it's just a van. But, you know, you've got your luxuries, electric windows, central locking. Big storage area. Step that's not all been smashed to bits. You've got your seats. I'm going to just uh, go out the other side because it's starting to rain heavy. I'm going to jump in and we'll do the rest of the finish off the review inside. See, nice fuel filler cap again. No stupid caps, just comes off. Nice and simple. It's all you need with a van. Things get too complicated nowadays. Right, so welcome to the interior. It's actually a really nice place to be. I'm talking myself into actually starting to look for one of these things and buying one. <laughs> I genuinely am. For the money that they cost, by the way. Because when you look at some of these transits for three and four thousand pounds, they're rotten to bits. They've been welded hundreds of times. God knows what wrong with the engines on them. And this seems to be spot on. So, like I've said over there, you've got your electric windows. Twin electric windows, front and back. You've even got electric mirrors. You know, two electric, probably maybe heated, maybe not, but electric, and they do work. Most transits and stuff I get coming in, windy windows, manual mirrors, nothing fancy. Gear stick up on the on the dashboard, nice place to be, easy to to get to. Haven't got no problems with that. Loads of storage. You have you know your glove box, little storage areas. And something like as well, without having the dashboard in front of you, it's over there. I'm never a big fan of them, but this is so nice and big and, like, easy to read. You've got a nice big clock. You know, these builders' vans that have stupid little, tiny little digital displays and they get covered in dust and everything within a, within a few weeks and you can't see them and they break. Nice, clear clock. Like it. Dashboard as well. Rev counter, speedo, fuel and temperature. And if you notice, this van's only done supposedly 50,000 mile. But uh, I think these have problems with the speedo head, so that may not be the true mileage. Nice, easy to use buttons, fog lamp, hazards, headlamp levelling, air recirculation, nothing fancy like aircon, but I would imagine it might have been an optional extra on these. Easy to use, easy to get to, tactile, rubber stuff, which is meant for being in a working vehicle. So it works out pretty much what you want so obviously an aftermarket cd player i don't know what would have been fitted in there from you i've never really had much to do with these 12 volt output you've got your ashtray to keep various things in handbrake in the conventional place can't comment if they're very so fix anything like that but it is a 2007 vehicle but a nice three-seater van all the storage down here obviously it's not the high top so you haven't got the storage above the cab but you would have if you if you did you know Nothing fancy like mirrors, it is a working vehicle after all. You know, and at, at just having that extra bit of space in front of her without the speedo being there, just to keep like sat knobs and things like that. And everybody will notice what do you recognize that steering wheel out of? Dio Matiz and all the other rest of the Dio range. And something else I've spotted them Vauxhall, Vauxhall Astra Mark IV. So there's little bits of this thing. Again, Vauxhall, that's the same sort of being your Saab. Little buttons down here, I don't know what they do, not going to touch them. But you know, somebody's done a nice job putting the checker plates on the floor. You know, and even underneath that, you've got your full rubber system in, so all the muck and water doesn't go into the floor. So, yeah, I mean, there's not a massive amount to talk about on these. You know, like... It's just standard light systems, which you'll see in any other do you, you know, indicators, main beam, standard lights, intermittent wipers. You know, you've even got a bit of an adjustment on here. You don't get that 
on the, a lot of these old that transits of this age mind a lot of them don't have the, the basic ones have any of this spec but we're not we're not really talking about specs for vans but just as an all-round vehicle i think it's spot on and if a one come up cheap enough and it wasn't in too bad a condition i would certainly um recommend i would certainly consider buying one uh, you know there will be people out there who say they're rubbish they've had these experiences that that, that this that and the other but i'm not gonna rave how bad some, like one of these is built because i work on transits i fought the bits vw caddies and um the what's the bigger ones the like the the transporters and i'm telling you one thing for the money them things cost they are nothing that people should be shouting about uh the vw crafters rot the bits uh the early ones and they use the vw engines clearly which are rubbish the sprinters are okay but again the rot sets in on them terribly if they're not looked after properly and even though the mercedes engines are pretty good they still have their problems so you know um with the sitting and peugeot range i'm not really gonna go there because they seem to have taken over everybody now like the reynolds reynolds fans are now badged as uh nissan ones and the peugeot uh, the Vauxhall vans use now citroen and peugeot and they used to use renault you just don't know what you're getting into now with the van range it's mainly all taken over by the french even toyota use the french psa vans so i like these because they just pretty much are what they are then they're, 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 they're no frills they're not sold as being anything fancy they're billy they're billy basic but do you know what it is? Sometimes that works. Look at Dacia. They've done very well. I know they're owned by Reynolds again, but they've done very well by just meaning sometimes simple is best, which, especially for a works vehicle, it's definitely the best. Um, so, yeah, um, I'll leave the review there. So that's a review of a 2007 LDV Maxxis. Uh, if you've got anything you would like to ask us about, leave a comment below. I'll keep it there. Uh, if you like it, like, comment, sub subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you. Bye. Just thought I would add this onto the end of the review of the LDV Maxxis. 2007 vehicle, remember? I think, I know it said 50,000 mile on the clock, but I think it's done a lot more miles than that. Just wanted to show you underneath of this van. It is absolutely spotless. I can't, I've actually, uh, there's a couple of the Reynolds, the traffic and stuff, that do tend to keep okay underneath. But these get laughed at. You know, they were cheap, rubbish, Chinese, van, all this, even though these are made, were made in Birmingham up to 2011. Look at this, so if you are thinking about buying one of these, these look like the original brake pipes. Simple, straightforward adjuster for the brakes, low adjustment, nice, simple beam axle, leaf springs, you should look at those spring mountain points though. Solid. Really built good, well underneath. Very well. Go over here, all along the sills. Clearly there's little dots of rust, but believe me, I wouldn't even be able to put a 57 plate transit on the lift. Look at this fun subframe. That's 2012 cars at the moment, and much newer coming in with totally corroded through um, subframes. See the size of that? That's not going to round off easily, is it? I know that's just water, not oil. Look at this. Delphi shock absorbers. I don't know if you can see above that there. Really well built van. Certainly, if I seen one of these coming up cheap, I would snap it up. Plastic fuel tank all along this sill. It's a little bit there, but like, trust us, I'll, I'll do a video underneath a vehicle half this one's age, and you'll really, really tell the difference. Plastic tank, all original exhaust, which looks, to be fair, I don't know what this stuff is. Some companies use them. It's more or less a stainless steel. But them, the clamps... All like stainless steel looking kind of metal. And it just never rusts. Up there, there's your cat. No, no stupid um, DPF on it. Very few oil leaks. 
So then, yeah, there we go. Just want to show you step areas. These are your steps. Try and find a transit without a welded in step. But even these VWs, they rot terribly on all these cross members and their uh, subframes. So there's all up the front end, inner arches. Look at that. The alternator I'm going to do, perfectly accessible when this cover's removed. These fun chassis legs. The old favourite on where they normally rust through up here. Immaculate. So, there you go. If you're thinking about buying one of these vans, and you can get one cheap, just make sure, I can't comment too much about the engines, but just make sure all things at the timer belt's being done, they've been serviced regular. But I'm telling you one thing, you won't regret buying one of these if you get one cheap. Definitely, I would definitely say it's better built than most of its competition, in fairness. So thanks for watching, I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.